In this video, we shall talk about common mathematical symbols. Many of these math symbols are symbols you had seen in your previous education from junior high school to senior high school. Okay, so what is the meaning of this? So, of course, your addition and subtraction. But aside from that, we also use them to indicate side numbers. Negative 6, negative 100, positive 100. So what does that mean? So the negative real numbers, if you were to arrange your real number in your real number line, 0 is the origin. So a negative real number is to the left of 0. And a positive real number is to the right of 0. We also use plus or minus to indicate relative measure. Okay, what do you mean by relative measure or re relative position? It means... It means your position in relation to another thing. We see that sometimes in temperatures. Okay, So what does it mean when the temperature is negative 5 degrees Celsius? That means it is 5 degrees Celsius below the freezing point. And the freezing point is 0 degrees Celsius. You saw this symbol in statistics. This symbol stands for standard deviation. So this means two standard or 2.5 standard deviations. So for example, when you, have, when you have a quiz, the average score is 6. It's up to 10. The average score is 6. And the standard deviation, let's say for example, is 1 point. If your score is 2.5 standard deviation from the mean, that means your score is somewhere between 8 or maybe better than 8.5 to 9. We saw this symbol plus or minus in the quadratic formula. What is the meaning of this? The meaning of this is x would have at least two values. The first value is negative b plus the square root of that all over 2a. And the other value is going to be negative b minus square root all over 2a. Plus or minus also means adding a margin of error. So sometimes you will see something like this. This is the symbol for average or the sample mean. So the sample mean is, let's say, for example, 65 millimeters plus or minus 3 millimeters. So that means the average measurement is not exactly 65 millimeters. It's somewhere between, okay, so it's going to be somewhere between 62 millimeters and 68 millimeters. 62 because 65 minus 3 is 62. 65 plus 3 is 68. These are our symbols for multiplication and division. Sometimes we use the dot for multiplication. Sometimes the parenthesis. We use the bar to indicate division. The equal sign. The equal sign has many variants. So it's going to be a statement of equality. 5x minus 15 is equal to 0. The variance of the equal sign would be not equal to. Approximately equal to. Okay, so when you are rounding off numbers with a long string of decimal numbers, so you round them off, what you come up is an approximate value, and you would use this symbol for that. This one is congruence. This one means identical to. Congruence is something like this. Let's say, for example, you have two triangles. You put one triangle on top of the other. If they perfectly match each other, if they perfectly fit and match each other, that means they are congruent. Less than or equal to. Greater than or equal to. Example, x is greater than or equal to 12, and less than or equal to 27. So when I was a student, this was the allowable number of units student must enroll during a regular semester. Your load must be not less than 12, okay? And it should not be greater than 27. When I was a student, there were occasions wherein I would choose only to enroll in 12 units. The regular load was 18 units. So I was choosing 12 units. 
so that I can give time to my other habits. You know, when I was a student, I liked to run. I liked to play basketball. I also trained in martial arts. So I wanted to give, I want to devote attention to those other endeavors, which is why I was only opting to get enrolled in 15, sometimes 12 units. But you cannot get enrolled in less than 12. You will be considered an irregular student. What else? So we use these symbols, small letters, capital letters, to mean variables. Okay, variables. The key word there is very. So these are quantities that change in value. They are not constants. So P, for example, is often used as the symbol or variable for pressure. V is for volume. T is for temperature. You know what? I can remember my days when I was a kid and my father was still alive. It was I who was filling in butane gas into his lighter because he was smoking. And it was one of my duties to fill in his lighter with butane. A butane is a gas in a cylinder. And I experienced what this means. Okay? Because when you fill in the lighter with butane gas, the gas in the container is diminished so there is less pressure inside the tank and i can feel the temperature decreasing the cylinder is becoming colder subscripted values t1 or t2 so t1 and t2 are subscripted variables subscripted that is what you call the subscript okay so what is let's say for example t stands for temperature so in the first time you took your brother's temperature, he was sick, was 39 degrees Celsius. After two hours, you took it again, you took the temperature, you measured his temperature, it was 38.1 degrees Celsius. And you took it for the third time after the passing of two more hours, and it's now 37.1 degrees Celsius. So that is how you can use these subscripted variables. Okay, so, of course, you are familiar with this. These are the Greek letters, small case. We use them to, to name angles. We also use them as symbol for some irrational numbers such as pi. This one is another Greek symbol. This is a sigma notation, but the capital letter or the capital Greek letter for sigma. So, it means summation. It, it means obtaining the sum. So example, example, you have four quizzes. So you, have, you would have four scores. What is the average of those four scores? So before you can get the average, you must get the sum of those four scores. And this is how you can indicate it in math symbols. The summation of x sub i, th this is how you read it. The summation of x sub i, i from one to four. And after getting the sum, you divide it by 4 to get your average score. This is pronounced as mu, mean, average. You use that symbol to mean the population average. This is sigma. That is also a sigma notation. That is also a sigma. Okay, small case of this one. So this one is used to indicate the standard deviation. Square root of 9. So square root of 25 is equal to 5 because 5 squared is equal to 25. Fourth root. So that is how you read it. The fourth root of 16 is equal to 2. Why? Because 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is equal to 16. This one is probably a symbol that only STEM students saw during their high school education and they will see this again if they were to pursue a stem related degree in college so dy over dx or this one is d sub x or dx this is how you read it f prime of x you call them derivatives so when you see these symbols in any book they pertain to derivatives all of these imply rate of change. So you should be familiar with the rate of change because in your junior high school math, you were given the slope of a line. You were given 
a linear equation and your teachers told you that if your linear equation is given in this way, this is the slope of the line. And how do you get it? It's the change in y over change in x. It is a rate of change. Okay, so the slope of your line is actually a derivative. If you plan to go to higher math courses, you will see this. The integral of x squared dx. This symbol is called the integration symbol or the integral. Okay, so what does the integration symbol imply? Well, it implies the word integration. So let's say, for example, you are a group leader of a team of students who are given the task to produce a term paper. So someone will write the introduction. Someone, another one will, would write chapter one. Another one would write chapter two. You will write the summary. So when you integrate all of that, you will produce a term paper, a complete term paper. So that is the meaning of integration, to put things together. But in math, to put things together, to integrate them means to sum up. It's not just summing up. It's more than summing up. Because if the meaning of integration here is just to sum up, then we will use the, the sigma notation. But we are not using the sigma notation. We are using this symbol. So what this means or what this pertains to is the summing up of infinitely many terms. Something like that. And sometimes each term is very small. So what does it mean to sum up infinitely many terms? It's something like this. 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 8. 1, 3, 5, 8. Those are your terms. So summing up infinitely many terms is you will sum up so many terms, the number of those terms does not end. That is the sort of thing, that is the sort of adding that you will do when you are integrating.